this virtual Chelsea Flower Show online episode, I'm going to be talking about pots in my new garden, which is a beautiful small cottage garden that we're transforming with pots. And in front of me is the most grand copper pot of all that we've got. And it's full of tulips at the moment, which are quite shy to flower because it's been so cold. But this pot has been giving us interest right the way from March because we planted it in a style known as a bulb lasagna. And what a bulb lasagna is, is bulbs layered on top of one another in the autumn. And what that does is give you a show that starts really early on. So the show actually started with snowdrops and then it went into hyacinths, then to narcissi, and now we've got the crowning glory of all, tulips. And because it's been so cold, they are quite slow to flower. But the first tulips that are in flower these ones called Palmyra, which are a lovely peony tulip, like a claret annika in a ball gown dress. And we've paired, paired that one up with one called Sarah Raven, which is a lily flowered tulip, beautiful deep burgundy and pointed petals. And the later tulips also emerging now, the parrots. And they look like dragon eggs, but this one is black parrot and it's just starting to get its purple edge. And in total contrast is going to be a huge orange goblet one called Parrot King and that will be like a massive goldfish on a stem and it's going to really transform the look of this pot. We've also got foliage which comes from the Iris reticulatus and they were in flower in March with these lovely little purple flags and now we've got the lovely foliage which is just giving the whole pot an arrangement like presence. So when you're thinking about your bulbs it's not just flowers it's foliage as well. And in the middle of this pot is a baby cardoon. And you might know cardoons as a huge, great, tiring cottage garden plant. But if you buy them as a small plant in the autumn and plant them on top of your bulbs, all through the winter, they'll give presents in the garden. The number one question I get asked on my Instagram account, what do you do for your pots? Have they got holes in? If you don't put holes in your pots, it means the pots can't lose water. And that means bulbs in particular are going to rot through the winter. So make sure your pots always have holes in. Cover the holes up with polystyrene or slates, broken terracotta, that works really well. And that just encourages the compost to drain any excess moisture away from roots and bulbs. And in terms of compost, you want to be adding organic chicken manure and lots of organic nutrients in the form of mulches. So it could be stable manure or farmyard manure. And also comfrey feed is really good to be feeding your bulbs at this time of year so that they bulk up and are good for next year. I don't save all my bulbs though. Tulips actually aren't worth saving after they've flowered. Often the bulbs that you've planted, which were fat and big, are very tired after they've done their flowering thing. So I actually plant them fresh every year. But in the case of hyacinths, narcissi and snowdrops, they're all lifted and put in an onion bag with the foliage still attached. And that dies down and goes back into the bulb. And that means they'll flower again next year and for years after. As long as you leave the foliage on, that means that mother bulb can take all the nutrients back and she'll flower for years on end. This is a smaller pot that we've got on a table in the middle of a garden because we like to have people around for supper and lunch. So smaller pots mean you can take them off tables and the tables could become part of the indoor life as well as the garden life. So this is a lovely old tin bath and as well as the bowl, lasagna, we've done pot toppers in the form of wallflowers. And wallflowers have the most exquisite scents. They're biennial, so you do need to buy them or sow them this year for flowers next spring. But the wonderful thing about them is they're scented and also one of the most favourite flowers of bumble and honeybees. So it's always good to have honey wallflowers in your garden for pollinators. And you can cut them for the house. They're really lovely for arrangements with tulips and they're just the perfect complement to tulips. They're not trying to show off too much compared to the tulip. They're like the understory bridesmaid to a tulip flower. And the Victorians love them because of the scent, and I think they're due for a real revival. This is a new variety called Sunset Red, which is a much better digger than a lot of the older varieties. And the key thing with them is when they're seedlings to give them a good feed of seaweed feed that keeps them really healthy and happy, and that will keep the foliage lush as well. So the last thing I want to talk about are these wigwams of hazel, and um, they're the nicest thing to stake all your plants with and I find them really invaluable for the whole of the summer season. We can stake our roses with these, delphiniums, and also what loves them more than anything else are our sweet peas. And we sowed these on Boxing Day, and that means that they've got lovely, healthy roots, um, and that's what sweet peas really need to flower well. So they're gonna be planted out today, actually. 
they've had their tips pinched out and that's making them bush. So if you go to the garden centre this week and buy a pot of sweet peas, pinch the tips out and actually thin them out too. There's only about two plants in here, but when you buy them from a garden centre, there's often lots of seeds in a small pot and they'll all argue with each other for energy. So if you are buying your sweet peas rather than sowing your own, thin them out and plant them in a really big pot like this because they like a deep root run and water and feed them lots. Seaweed feed is the best thing for them. And they love hazel or silver birch because it's very nice for the little tendrils to latch onto, much better than a bamboo cane. But if canes are the only thing you have, wrap hessian string around them because the softness of the string they'll really enjoy. And of course, as soon as they start to flower, pick them non-stop because you'll get more flowers by doing that. Once all these spring bulbs go over at the end of May and we've lifted them out of the pots, we're going to be thinking about our summer display. And all winter long we've had our window ledges crammed with our favourite pelagoniums. And most of them are scented. This one's called Prince of Orange, but I've also got Atter of Roses. And they have really lovely pink flowers, but the best thing about pelagoniums is they cope with small pots and they'll also cope with being neglected for a long weekend. They won't die if you go away for three days. They'll be able to cope with being on the dry side of things. And with warmer summers, that's really important. They'll still be attractive and you can cut them for the vase, but you can also use them in the kitchen for herbal teas. And they smell beautiful and are very low maintenance. And come the autumn, before the first frost, they can all just go back on the windowsill. Keep cutting the tips off and that will make them bush and you can use them from one year to the next, almost like perennials that all go inside the house to be enjoyed one year to the next. And the key thing about them is keep them quite well watered during the winter. A lot of people tell you not to water them. These have been guzzling water all winter long. About a mug um, every two weeks will keep them really happy with just a dash of seaweed feed. I know I've said seaweed feed in every clip, but it is the best thing to feed all your plants with.